President Donald Trump's willingness to meet with North Korea's Kim Jong-un has caught many off guard, including China. propaganda and no mention yet of a President Trump Kim Jong-un meeting today in Beijing a the South Korean uh, leader of uh, their uh, national security department debriefing Chinese officials about developments remember he was the one along with other South Korean officials who were at the White House last Thursday and they're the ones that brought that invitation of talks from Kim Jong-un which the president promptly accepted as well as that commitment to pause missile launches nuclear tests as well as uh, talking about denuclearization. So the question is, why hasn't Pyongyang confirmed yet? President Donald Trump's willingness to meet with North Korea's Kim Jong-un has caught many off guard, including China. Beijing has long urged the two countries to meet, but the suddenness of the decision has triggered a mixed reaction here of both relief and worry. The proposed meeting has dramatically reduced the threat of war on China's doorstep, analysts say. But if Pyongyang and Washington make progress in mending relations, that raises other concerns. experience, I know they take a while to put that out in writing and then put it out to the public. No doubt also, they're probably monitoring signals coming from the White House in the last couple of days. There have been a, some qualifiers, some shift, as is the White House too. Probably, Bill, what's going to have to happen is a direct talk between the two countries, the U.S. and North Korea, to firmly commit this to move forward. Political science professor Shi Ying Hong. If there is a mutual, partial compromise, between North Korea and the United States and Kim Jong-un have some motivation to, to cooperate with the United States in the long term checking against China. The prospect of a denuclearized Korean peninsula and closer ties between North and South Korea also raises other long-term strategic questions, says South Korean China studies professor Sa Jung Kyung. Will it be beneficial for China to have the creation of a unified Korea taken up by South Korea, an ally of the U.S., and that is very close to the U.S.? Beijing is North Korea's biggest trading partner, but its support of the most rigid sanctions regime to date over the past year has added to tensions with Pyongyang. And that's not the only problem, Saw says. There has rarely been talks between the Kim Jong-un regime and Xi administration, and as it is at a state where mutual distrust is very strong. Kim's rapid shift over the past few months from missile tests to diplomacy has left Beijing on the sidelines. Some have suggested China could host the talks, but Shi Ying Hong says that's unlikely to happen. And China wants to play some role, but the, the greatest obstacle is Jin Jong-un's hostility against China up to now. Still, from Trump's firing of Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and the challenges of inter-Korean diplomacy, analysts say much remains uncertain. Some are skeptical the talks could even get off the ground. During meetings with the South Korean envoy earlier this week, Chinese President Xi Jinping urged Pyongyang and Washington to hold talks as soon as possible and said he is delighted with the progress that is being made on the Korean Peninsula. Where are the possible places where this meeting could take place, Greg? That's a very good question, too, Bill, and that's not confirmed yet either. Over the weekend, it seems to be centering on the DMZ. Uh, this is the uh, the border between North and South Korea, pretty neutral ground. There's a building there that we've, we've been at called the Peace House, where there have been past meetings, and in fact, where the planned summit between Kim Jong-un and South Korean President Moon could be taking place. Moon, by the way, speaking out today, he's saying that the next two months could be, and here's a quote, a precious chance to denuclearize, to establish permanent peace. He's warning, too, about being uh, careful. By the, word, by the way, uh, Bill, no word exactly when the President Trump 
Kim Jong-un meeting will take place either. Uh, first it was by May, then end of May, and then in the next two months. Uh, the word we're getting now is it's going to be not just at a place, but at a time to be decided. China is voicing support for the possible U.S.-North Korea summit despite concerns that it will be left out of talks that could dramatically alter regional security and political dynamics. President Trump surprised the world last week when he agreed to accept North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's offer to meet about ending Pyongyang's nuclear weapons program. And then on Tuesday, the U.S. president fired his secretary of state, Rex Tillerson, nominating CIA director Mike Pompeo to that post. We welcome the VOA Asia Orbel Shell. He is the Arthur Ross Director of the Center on U.S.-China Relations at the Asia Society in New York City. Also a former professor and dean at the University of California, Berkeley's Graduate School of Journalism. Professor Shell, thanks for being with us. Let, let's first talk about Tillerson, if you don't mind. Uh, what does his absence mean as far as the possible talks between Trump and Kim Jong-un? Well, he was never a very strong uh, Secretary of State, but he did believe in negotiations, and I think did in a, have a capacity in some measure to, to, to shelter uh, the whole scenario that President Moon Jae-in of, of uh, Korea has sketched out uh, to try to bring to the table. We really don't know what Mike Pompeo will uh, what his disposition will be towards uh, such talks. But it's not illogical to, to, to conclude that, I mean, if Trump is, a, is sort of on both sides of many contradictions, this is true of China, too. On the one hand, he's Xi Jinping's best friend, and he wants to sort of make a deal, and uh, uh, to some degree, China is obliged in, in Korea, or not completely. But on the other hand, you go back to his campaign persona, uh, he's very, very sort of uh, adversarial in regard to China, particularly on the issue of trade, and that we see rising more and more. So maybe with Tillerson leaving, he has integrated his portfolio of uh, cabinet heads to be more on the hawkish side and less on the negotiation side. And what does that mean as far as any balance if these talks do take place? Well, I mean, it could mean that that that. China has sort of missed an opportunity to make a deal. I think it's not com that opportunity isn't completely passed, but it's getting closer and closer to oblivion. And I think it's China's sort of inability to recognize that the playing field was out of level and that the U.S. at sooner or later was going to have to respond. And Trump has certainly pushed forward with that part of the American sort of policy portfolio. And indeed, I think the climate in America is increasingly uh, irritated and fed up with the situation that uh, it, it finds itself in, in particularly in, in businessmen in, in China. So I think we may be in for a, a fairly rough patch with China in a more adversarial way. Uh, and actually, North Korea was a place where we could have really had a convergence at Xi Jinping, been able to lock in, a, I think, a more reasonable deal when Trump was in Beijing. Do you believe that these talks will take place? And if you do, do you think they'll reach any type of conclusions? I think it's possible that they will take place, because if they don't, uh, it would be a loss of faith for Trump. And I think even... Kim Jong-un sees a great opportunity here to get on the world stage as an equal player. So I have a feeling that both have a vested interest now in doing so. But whether they can actually push the ball uh, forward on the question of the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, that's, a, that's another question, and that's a very heavy lift. And I, I think that I would be very surprised if Trump is any more uh, successful than his, 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 those who preceded him. We did mention China seems to be left on the sidelines of this whole scenario. How do you see that? 
Well, I think uh, so far uh, this has been a, uh, a, uh, an arrangement that the two Koreas have made. And now they're bringing in Trump because he's agreed to meet with Kim Jong-un. So for the moment, anyway, China is on the sideline. But uh, I think in the end, China will never be on the sideline uh, going forward, particularly in Asia. So its shadow is always long and dark, and it it will have an influence regardless of what happens in the next few months uh, on this negotiation.